What's up, guys? Welcome to Friday Night Pro Scrims. It's Puckett and Revan, and we are we got an epic best of seven tonight. Yeah, Quantic Gaming making their return to the Call of Duty scene. It was announced earlier today that it's Gosu and Team 4 Nothing. They're going to merge, and they're bringing back Mark from Quantic Gaming, and they're going to rebrand as well. Bringing back Quantic, we're about to see how they do tonight. They're going to be going up against Roughnecks. We've had them on previously, and they did pretty well. Yeah, they've won both times I've brought them on, actually. So Roughnecks, the team to beat so far in our pro scrims, um, basically have a decent challenge for themselves tonight. What do you think about our matchup here as you look at Ego's rankings? He had them within about two of each other. Yeah, I really like this Quantic squad. I mean, I've teamed with every player on the team. Twiz, he's a very vocal player, and he's kind of like me. If there's a player I could relate to, it's either Rambo or Twiz. Okay. He's just, he'll do whatever it takes to win. Great communication. And whenever you have a player with good communication on your team, it just makes you focus on your shot so much better. He's always calling out saying where everybody's located, what you need to look at. He's just like a complete player. I really like Twiz's play. I've also teamed with Liar. Actually, I haven't teamed with Nameless, so I'm going to correct myself there. So maybe I will one day in the future. But Liar, he's a very solid player as well. He was voted for his Pro Choice Worlds. Uh, he was the best Search and Destroy player for the Black Ops one season. Wow. So we'll see how he does tonight. We're going to be playing a couple Search and Destroys. Now, is he going to be rocking an SMG this evening or the AR? Um, he could do both. Usually, you're going to see him with an AR, maybe the anchor roll. Right. So, I mean, it, that all remains to be seen. Also, Fizzer, everybody knows him for his search and destroy gameplay. Hey, I, had a <laughs> I had a chance to play with him at EGL. He's a very solid player as well. And he re he plays with his heart. So, he's going to be a very emotional player. If Quantic has the momentum, then they're going to be able to take the scrim easy peasy. Do you play with your heart, Revan? I have a, yeah, I do. My I blue heart. I don't have a heart. <laughs> Heartless, stone cold killer. All right, coming up on the other side though, we got this RNX squad that we've seen in the past. Um, I believe last time they were featured. You said the player to watch in terms of score streaks, which are on tonight, yeah. is Moon. Yeah, definitely. He's just he knows how to play for score streaks. I believe yesterday it was Parasite the one playing for score streaks. Moon does that, but I think Moon does it a little bit better. Really? Yeah, I think he knows how to stay alive a bit better than Parasite does. Granted, Parasite's still learning the role. Right. You know, he's still new to the anchor role, but Moon, he's definitely the player on top in terms, in terms of uh, playing for your score streaks. Also, you have Plasma. Unfortunately, he's under 18, so he can't compete at the Call of Duty Championships. But Sorry, Doug. <laughs> he's a very strong submachine gun player. Mm -hmm. He doesn't travel much. Hopefully, we'll see him at Dallas, up, uh, the upcoming event for Call of Duty. But he's just going to be playing very aggressive. Similar, I think he'd be a great fit on Farico in terms of aggressive play style. He's just one of those players. He's always up in your face, putting on pressure on the other team. Then you have Option. I played with him in Mount Over 3 a bit. I like him as well. He's a great player. Right. He's just a, a solid player and a reliable teammate. He was actually one of those guys that was inconsistent, but he's putting up big numbers when he goes positive, especially on hard mm -hmm. point. Look for Option, go off like he did. Um, I believe Yemen is back in the rotation, and I remember options play on Yemen was just disgusting, so look for that player there. He's the guy that uses the shotgun, so he'll be setting up with that. Oh, there's a little shoddy action. We don't <laughs> have any hijack in the rotation, but no. do we have cargo tonight? We saw Fariko trying to use shoddies on cargo hardpoint. No cargo hardpoint today, but we do have cargo search and destroy, so I'll go ahead. I'll give you yeah, guys the, the map the rotation. Let's get the rundown of the best of seven here. All right, so first map, it's going to be slums hardpoint. Then we're moving into Plaza Search and Destroy, mm -hmm. which is a map we only see in our Game Battles Live tournaments. We haven't seen it in a pro scrim yet, so this will be its debut. Also, we have Standoff Capture the Flag for map number three, then Raid Hardpoint, then Cargo Search and Destroy, Slums Capture the Flag, and finishing it off game number seven. If we get there, it'll be Yemen Hardpoint. All right, Slums CTF, always one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. One side definitely <laughs> more advantageous than the other one, and it's really a battle to see who can mm -hmm. get the most flags capped on there. And then, of course, we're hoping we go to game number seven for Yemen because why not go all the way to the tiebreaker game? That seems to be what we do every single time here on Pro Scrims, with the exception of last night. Complexity, quick 6-3 or 6-2. Yeah, they, they lost like two maps in a row up the start there, and it was looking really good for Perico. If you didn't see any of those matches, maybe you missed it. You're out late night, you know, school night studying. Go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash official MLG Call of Duty or MLG COD. Everything will be there, and we actually upload the VODs, like, really quick. I was surprised. It's up within, like, 30 minutes of the broadcast. So right. Be sure to go to that. Subscribe. I want 100,000 100, subscribers before Dallas. Yeah, or at least 15,000. <laughs> 100,000, 15, we'll take either one. Revan, I'm feeling very yellow tonight.
but I'm ready to get this match started. Are you? You got the yellow fever? I do, always. <laughs> <laughs> right. It looks like we got our teams ready. Fizzer, nameless liar, actually are waiting on Twiz. Twiz. Yeah. But then we have Moon, Intake, Plasma, and Option all ready to go for RNX. And I guess while we're filling, let's go ahead and talk about the big announcements today. Call of Duty Championship was announced. It's going to be... A $1 million tournament. I believe MLG may be helping out with that in some way, shape, or form. But the rules are not made by us, guys. If you're freaking out, if you're under 18, it's not my fault. It's not. It's not Revan's fault. We're. I Actually, I made the rules. I feel less so. yellow. Do you feel less yellow? I still got the yellow fever just a little bit. Okay. But it's a little bit better. But I made the rules, guys, so you can blame me. No, I don't like minors. Exactly. So. Revan's like, I really don't want to commentate, fuck it. <laughs> I would rather go back and play. And actually, that's something you talked about today. As soon as you heard the announcement, you yeah. told me you're thinking about getting back into the competitive scene playing-wise. Well, I, it's a $1 million prize pool. It's, you know, how many of those are you going to find, right? So I really got to take the chance at that. So pick me up. Optic, Scumpy can't play. Pick me up. Fear, John can't play. I'm here, boy. <laughs> All right. It's a 32-team <laughs> tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, very cool that they're working with not only us, but ESL. The top eight yeah. teams from MLG Dallas will be invited. Same thing going on there with ESL, the top eight over there. They're going to be taking eight teams from the league play, the top eight mm -hmm. Masters teams. They're all of course, have to be 18 and over. And then the final eight teams are going to be decided from uh, regions like Australia, Asia. They're going to announce those details a little bit later. But very awesome stuff. $1 million tournament. And your best chance of getting there is to sign up for a Dallas tournament. Here it is real quick. Take a look at this card, guys. $50,000 tournament, March 15th through the 17th in Dallas, Texas. Tickets are on sale for a team pass. It's just 280 bucks for the entire team. That's a discounted rate. After Feb 10th, that rate is going to go up. And if you do sign up, you're an NA team before Feb 10th, you're going to get a chance to play in an online qualifier for top 12 seeding, which will be a big head start helping you finish in that top eight. But, Revan, it looks like our teams are ready to go. Let's jump into game number one right now as we head to slums. It's going to be some hard point action. It looks like already we're going to have Quanic with early control. Plasma's down. Moon was the only one not picked off at the very start here. But we're going to go to Quanic, the new team, formerly known as FaZe or Fournot. Now Quanic. Tell me, what makes this team so good? They have great chemistry. They've been playing together for a while now. So they're a team that's going to be on the top pretty soon. They just need a bit more practice. I think Search and Destroy is probably going to be their best game type. But, you know, they have a leg up here because Roughnecks, they haven't played in a while, so they're going to be warming up for the first few minutes. As you see, Fa or Quanic almost said Phaser because we're on board with Twiz. But they're off to a very strong start. They already have 28 points on this middle hill. Usually we see teams battling out, uh, just trying to get some scrappy time on this middle hill, obviously. But the second one is more important. And Quanic, they had the better spawns here. They're already set up, and they're looking to put themselves in an even better position and build their lead here. But I really like what Roughnecks did off the start there, if I could talk about it just a little bit. What Plasma did was he threw a smoke over the blue hop-up wall right to the middle, and he jumped over it. Usually when you make that play, you're trying to flip the spawns off the start. Unfortunately, he didn't want to do that. He challenged the kills in the middle, and it didn't work out, but I like uh, the idea behind that. Intake for RNX already has the shotgun. Quanic's setup was broken immediately. RNX walked in, picked off all three players in the hill, but there was someone still left down there. I believe it was Nameless who survived, and they were able to get the spawns once again in the back and retake control of the hill. Right now, you have intake on your screen, failing with that shoddy. We're going to go to Fizzer. He's on a two-kill spree. He's watching the blue stairs, also helping out with any challengers coming down the middle who may be challenging Twiz. And Fizz is going to be pushing up. And uh, tell me, when, when you're set up in that bottom hill, where do you want to put all of your other players as we take a look at the minimap? Well, you want... Early on in the hill, you want one player in the back tables, just watching the right street if anyone tries to flip. You want one player watching the middle stairs, one player watching the blue stairs, and you can just kind of have a rover playing safety around the middle, whatever you guys want to do. But now the hill's rotating. It's going to be over near the white wall. As you see, Quanic, they're trying to flip spawns. I'm going to highlight the player in the back. So Wire, he's going to be anchoring for Quanic, as you see here. I had him highlighted for just a bit as Fizzer's fighting. And Quanic, they broke that hill rather quickly. They have a pretty decent lead here. They're up by around 60 points, and they're looking to build on that as we see Fizzer get taken out. Here is Liar in that anchor position, as you discussed. Looks like his score streaks are going to be the... He's going for the Hellstorm, then the Lightning Strike, and then he's got the Death Machine. So I was asking you about that earlier. When do you want to use the Death Machine? So I, on this map, I think the Death Machine is going to be most useful. 
on either the garage hill, maybe even the white wall hill, but or uh, the second hill of the game, which is all the way down low. The reason being is that when you pull out the death machine, you want to force your opponent through a narrow choke. That's where it's going to be most effective because it just has a such high rate of fire and a lot of bullets. It has 200 bullets, no reloads. So you just want to force your opponent into a bad position that's more favorable for you, obviously, because you're going to have the death machine out. Night shots by Liars. He's going to take out Moon and Quanic. They're off to a strong start. They're up by around 80 points and looking to take control of the garage here. I believe Liar's rocking a scuff because he is rocking those shots <laughs> extremely fast with the FAL. Also looks like, is that a peacemaker or peacekeeper? One of those in the back pocket? I don't know what he's it rocking is, It is SMG. a peacekeeper, yeah. Um, so we haven't banned that this evening. Yeah, it's nice to see how it's going to pan out in competitive play. Obviously, it's a new gun, still needs testing, but we don't want to ban it. I think it's really interesting to see how it comes into play. Especially if it's a viable gun, we'll see a lot more variety in terms of SMGs. I know Aches really wanted to use it yesterday, but Rico, uh, they didn't like it because not all of them had it. And now we see Liar putting it to work, picks up one kill on Plasma, but then gets cleaned up by Moon. We're going on board with Nameless. He's on a five kill spree, and right now he's really just working towards these score streaks. And there he goes, juggling the hard point. He's going to get all of them, and just like Liar, he has the same setup. He's got oh, his death machine, and now he's immediately putting it to use here his highest score streak and we talked about the war machine not being used because of flak jacket but there's really no counter to this death machine yeah just the high rate of fire gonna be able to put a lot of bullets into your enemy I'd like to see him save it for maybe the next hill they're gonna be able to retake control of the middle hill even if they weren't able to he could call in his lightning strike or hellstorm for his team to push in and retake it they're really dominating right now they're up by over a hundred points as nameless trying to put this death machine to work just got a glimpse of one player behind the statue as his teammates help regain control. And he's just going to be locking down the right side. Obviously, when you have a death machine out, you don't run too quickly. So you want to be more of a, in a stationary position. As there you go, he picks You're up one kill. You're a human sentry gun, <laughs> Yeah, basically. pretty much. Well, it looks like Plasma was the player able to lock down that hill for RNX. He helps him get to 52 points. But here, he spawns all the way across the map, chasing Moon through the blue house. And it looks like they're going to be trying to push and flip some spawns way in the back. His option is going to milk that middle hill. As you can see on the minimap, the action about to go down to his right. Plasma charging in. He's got three players down there. That's just kind of a, I don't know, stupid charge. It looks like they're just sending one player at a time down these middle stairs. And I don't think that's ever going to work out. No, especially since Nameless has that death machine. If He, oh, he could lock down one staircase by himself here. Because you're not going to be able to push to the death machine. If you want to try to break this setup, what you need to do is push around the left side, challenge that player all the way near the back tables, and you need to pick up that anchor kill. That's going to allow you to flip the spawns and get better positions on the hill. But as soon as I say that, Nameless with the Hellstorm missile picks up three as Quantic there just dominating. I, I, I think so far it's a fitting performance for Quantic's return. Yeah, welcome back, Quantic. <laughs> Great start here. 190 and counting. Let's go back to the hill as we got Twiz held up here on the left side. You see smoke grenades coming down as players are trying to break into this setup. Fizzerp and friends are going to start to leave the hill for the rotation. The hill is going to move in seven seconds over to the, the garbage area, the junkyard, some may call it. And already we can see Plasma is lit up on your mini-map. He is in position to lock this down. Let's go to RNX's. Plasma is going to get contested to his left. He goes down. Option's going to get hit by a lightning strike. Moon all the way across at Bricks and Intake. He's pushing from the statue just like that. Quantic retaking the setup they're inside the hill they're just 31 seconds away rnx getting mopped up here in game number one yeah so what you saw liar do right there once again the first time this hill came around he flanked around through garage got position at that back fountain and he just held it down so well for the quantic squad they're just able to break rnx's setup so easily and intake he's been using this shotgun all game long if we can let's pop up the scoreboard and see how he's doing with that i imagine it's not that useful on this map yeah 8 and 24 uh, I, I think it's time he should probably switch guns. Oh my goodness, <laughs> they are all almost double negative. Jesus, Quantic coming out. Guys, this is our host, right? Yeah, this is my host. This is our host, so it's a neutral host. You can't say, oh, Quantic has host on this one. And here it is, your final kill cam. Liar, the anchor, doing work with the FAL. We got to run down these stats real quick, Revan. I believe... No one went positive for RNX. No, 9 and 25, 9 and 20, 12 and 21, 12 and 23. They got crapped on. <laughs> Fizzerp dropping 33 kills in that one. Absolute domination. Of course, they forced RNX to come to them mm -hmm. all game because they were setting up first, and a lot of that credit goes to Liar. Yeah, Liar just doing an amazing job on that anchor position. I mean, Fizzerp really being the playmaker for his team, initiating the push and getting the initial kills inside the hill. He was on top, despite being all the way over near Colorado. 
So host pretty fine for Quantic as they take map number one in convincing fashion. 33 and 19 was Fizz in game number one. Let's see if he can keep it rolling coming into game number two. We're going to commercial break. When we come back, Revan, it's search and destroy. What map? Plaza. Plaza. Stay tuned, ladies and gents. It's Pro Scrims Friday night. We got Roughnecks going up against Quantic Gaming.